this is Paul Neal at Pen Productions. I'm going to create uh, a low-res um, uh, tent object for Unreal Engine in Max, uh, doing some cloth. One of my students asked about this, uh, so uh, I wanted to create something that uh, explains it a bit more. Uh, so I'm just starting with a plane in this case, and it's going to be a little triangular piece of, uh, of cloth. I'm just going to uh, center that out. Uh, convert it down to an editable poly. You'll notice there's no segments in it. I'm going to grab the vert vertices on either corner and say connect and then I'm going to do a connect or a cut from one corner right over to the other and then just go ahead and select the um, two verts here and delete them so I have a triangle. I'll just move that piece up somewhere just above and um, now with the uh, polygon picked into my modeling tools and in here I'm just going to do a quick tessellate and uh, then a quick mesh smooth and we are then going to go to the freeform tools and just kind of shape this out just a little bit to get it started and the freeform tool when you shift make sure and shift of course you want to make sure that uh, you're on a spherical radius and not depth or else you'll be selecting right through the mesh when you don't want to I don't want to uh, move any of these pieces up and down right now so I'm going to freeze Z and I'm just going to start pulling around some shapes so it's going to wrap around a little more maybe something closer to this And let's push that in maybe. So something closer to that, it's going to kind of wrap around this piece of tent. And now I'm going to grab the edges and just pull it out for sort of a front edge over it. It's going to hang down. Let's also make sure we set all the smoothing groups as we go so that it's always staying smoothed. And there's a um, sort of a low res uh, cage uh, that we're going to be working with um, to uh, to to start off the model with. I'm going to immediately make a copy of this. Control V and say copy. And uh, this copy is going to be um, uh, tent high. We'll call it. And I'm going to make that red. So, so our tent high is red and our tent low is is going to be blue so you can see it there and I'm just going to make that blue let's just hide tent blue, uh, the low res for now I'm going to grab the uh, um, uh, tent high now and uh, we're going to go back and just smooth it up a bunch more. Back to my freeform tools you can see where the tent pole sticks up out of here and so back into shift and in this case um, I want to be able to move it up and down in Z and probably around in the other ones. So I'm just going to pull that up so it sits above my tent pole for now. You know it looks kind of gets close to where it's supposed to be. Maybe about there and maybe adjust some more Pull this out a bit more, maybe. Probably something like that. You can see I've got a ground plane in here and uh, all the bits. I'm going to select everything, hit X, type in cloth, add the cloth modifier. And in cloth properties, we have to set them up. So the cylinder is going to be a collision object. Uh, it's very, very small, uh, or the scene's in meters. So we need to reduce these offset values. Uh, I'm just going to leave the offset to zero in the cloth and just take the depth down to 0.1. Same with the plane. It's going to be a collision object. And I'm just going to take it down to 0.1 as well. And then the tent high is going to be a cloth object. And we'll make it burlap. And you want to make sure that the uh, offset again is uh, pretty low and or the depth is pretty low um, on these uh, to make sure it doesn't sort of blow it up because um, we're working at meters here. So these numbers need to be very, very low. Uh, I'm going to say OK on that. And we need to make sure that self collision is on. And I'll just leave it on to a value of one. And uh, then we're going to hit uh, simulate local and watch it simulate. 
you can see that the whole tent is falling down through the ground and dropping away from the ground and this isn't you can see it falling through the pole and everything so I'm turn off simulate local reset the state and now we go into the sub object groups and we want to produce a couple of groups here so let's go to the top view I'll just go alt X and uh, so I can see the uh, top of the pole and let's change our selection method to a circle and select the verts around the top where the pole is going to be and then I'm just going to change my uh, selection method again just back to my marquee and grab a couple of uh, points along the outside corners where the it might be uh, staked down effectively and uh, it's going to be getting pulled tight so we'll grab some of those we'll make a group out of these and preserve that group so make sure that it's actually preserved and with those on let's go back to our cloth level again I'm just going to get out of the uh, uh, see-through mode and we'll turn on simulate local again and you'll see now that those uh, spots are going to be uh, held tight and it's going to uh, drop into place now and those um, those points are going to be holding those those areas up uh, and out at the corners as it drops down so first the gravity is taking over and it's starting to pull it down so it kind of gets starts getting looking a little ripply and from here it's going to settle down and start pulling itself tight so it's still simulating it's starting to look pretty good now it's getting pulled tight in the corners and where we expect it to be so those uh, those spots are, are looking good and uh, that's probably kind of what we're after right now so I'm going to turn off the simulate local so it stops right where it is and there's our uh, our model so far so I'm just going to unhike uh, the tent low at this point and turn on display selected with edge faces what we want to do now is we want to set it up on our um, freeform modeling to draw on surface and we're going to pick our um, tent high and uh, I'll keep the number probably pretty low here for to start with I'll try 0.3 and see what happens uh, where I've had it and I'm just going to drop this down to the surface and you're going to see that it's going to want to kind of blow up on us a little bit as it goes um, it's because it's you know nowhere near the surface at this point uh, now the other thing is is we probably um, want this to be uh, a little bit higher res as well uh, still so I'm just gonna uh, mesh smooth that one more time uh, and just uh, drop that on there and now we need to um, maybe do a little bit of pulling just to make sure it's just above the surface um, turn off Z We could try it the way it is, but it, um, you know, if it misses, it'll just kind of go all over the place. So let's try how that looks. Let's drop that on. And uh, now we want to go about adjusting that. So I'll just make it see through again. And let's just grab both those and isolate them to make our life a little easier. And I'm going to use the uh, grab brush. And we don't want to pull it right to the edge. I find it can um, cause errors when you're doing the projection uh, if it's right on the edge because it doesn't quite know where to project to and from. Um, sometimes it'll kind of miss the edges. And it looks like we might want some more polygons up top uh, to get the top of the, um, uh, it to, to look right. We can just kind of locally add a few in there and um, make sure it works. So that's probably starting to look pretty good. And now let's grab some of those polygons up top. And I'll just add more polygons just in this local area here uh, so that it adjusts itself a little bit better. Maybe we could do a little bit further down, we'll grab those. And we'll hit the turbo smooth again. So we can just go in and just uh, mesh smooth it again. It doesn't matter that it made a bunch of triangles. It's really not an issue in the slightest. And so let's go in and just make sure they stick to the surface a bit better. And that's actually starting to look pretty good, except we have, probably have a bit of a mess happening here um, where the end of it is, uh, uh, is fallen through uh, with sticking it down. It couldn't, didn't hit the surface properly. Um, so well, you know, one way to solve that is to do a quick relax on it, just a big global relax. 
and then pull it up again. And try again with the sticking down. And then we have to just do a bit of pulling. You can see it's starting to jump through itself as it goes. It doesn't know which side the surface is necessarily on. Um, so we might want to make the brush smaller and work on it a bit smaller. That seems to work as I was grabbing through with a big brush. It's not too bad. Again, let's maybe up the uh, height of this maybe to uh, 0 0.006. Again, I'm working very small. And let's just try dropping that up a little bit more. That's probably not too bad there. Looks like it's going to work out fairly well. So now that we've done that, we have to do a quick unwrap on this. And uh, so I'm going to um, uh, grab the uh, uh, unwrap tool, unwrap UVW, and it looks like I had some polygons selected. So I wanted to uh, just sort of pass that selection up. I'm going to go Control A, grab them all, and uh, do a quick planar map. And with the quick planar map, I've got this now. And yeah, let's just rotate that in a bit. Um, do a quick peel on it. Let's pull it up into the corners. That looks pretty good. And a uh, big, huge brush. And just cram this down use up our UV space as best as possible. So I have mashed the UVs a bit, so we might want to check that and just make sure that we don't have any major stretching after uh, you know, pushing that those bits in back into place again. But that gives us, you know, some good UV usage at this point, you know, instead of uh, wasting a pile of UVs. Uh, you know, that that helps keep it um, you know, keep our pixels uh, happy. So with that done, now what we want to do is we want to do a projection. I'm going to go ahead and grab the render to texture with zero in the keyboard. Enable the projection. We're going to pick the projection. Let's unhide everything again. And uh, we're going to say pick. And that is going to be tent high. And we don't need sub object levels on. Use existing mapping channel. We unwrapped it purposefully. So it's uh, it should be, the you know, what we what we're after I'm just going to reset uh, the cage and then just push it out a little bit manually see how that looks we're going to add in a normals map and a height map and in this case I'm going to make them both 1024 and let's uh, uh, go into the height map and I want to save this down just to a dump folder I've got right now we're going to call this uh, tent B for bump. And this one we're going to call it tent N for normals. And now we're going to render this out um, and check and see what we get. If we get any of these red spots, what those are are error spots. Holding down control, you can zoom in and out using your uh, left and right mouse buttons. So you can see a few spots where it's missing. And I might want to go try and take a look and see why it's missing in those spots. Uh, we could just try doing a bit more push on it. See if that solves the problem. And it looks like it did. We've hit it pretty good all the way around. I don't see any uh, major red spots anywhere. So that looks good then. We've uh, rendered out our maps. Um, yeah, so that now we can uh, go ahead and, and start building this in Unreal. So now we need to send out uh, the model and just export it. So I'm going to say uh, export selected and we will uh, dump it into the bin. I'll just stick it in the same maps folder so they're all in the same place. Call this tent 
and make sure that smoothing groups, tangents, binormals are on. And uh, I generally find with automatic units off, I'm exporting as um, um, uh, meters at this point, this, uh, this file is. So it needs to be converted to meters. I've imported all the assets, so I have the tent and um, I have the height map and the normal map. Now the height map was generated way too um, low, uh, the values, so I had to go into the uh, options in the render to texture and I set the min and max height uh, to just about what they were and the min max buffer values here. So this is sort of the best guess. So I set them there um, and then reproduced the, uh, um, the map so that it had more contrast to it. And you can see now it has a lot more contrast in it. So now we're gonna start building the um, shader. So let's take a look at the model. Uh, here's the model uh, as it currently sits. It, um, very few polygons in it really. So it should be a nice low res model. I'm gonna create a new material. We're gonna call that um, uh, tent mat and I'll stick my initials on the end and now we'll um, launch that and open it up and um, we'll drag in our two materials that we have that we've created and one other that I generated and this is just a tileable uh, material a sort of a canvas material that um, I just grabbed off the internet real fast uh, for the demo so we'll drop that in there as well what we're going to be doing is using, obviously the normal is going to go into normal and we're going to leave that pretty much as is for this uh, tutorial. We're going to be using um, the uh, texture sample here as a way to, um, uh, the, the height map as a way to blend in dirt into the texture sample. Uh, so if we just, you know, finish this off real fast, I'm going to stick in a metallic uh, constant is zero, spec constant is zero, um, and um, for now we'll just use a roughness constant as well, and uh, we'll take that reference, uh, that roughness, and just kind of push it up a little bit to uh, soften it, um, and uh, you know soften the uh, highlights, add sort of micro uh, cracks and crevices in the model to break up the um, uh, the reflections and everything else and obviously this is a canvas so we don't want that sort of thing in here. Uh, let's hit apply. Uh, let's go over to our tent here and um, in the uh, material slot then we're going to want to uh, load in our tent mat material. So now we've got this uh, tent uh, material here. Maybe we want it a little bit more, a little darker, a little more brown. We can do some color corrections on it or something uh, uh, shortly as we uh, start adding things. First off, we're probably going to want to tile it. So when you tile things, we can use uh, texture coordinates. And texture coordinates are going to allow us to be able to tile it up here, but uh, we want to create what's called a material instance. And that material instance is going to allow us to be able to have an instance material that will only load these maps once into the scene, but allow us to be able to have different settings for them whenever we want. So in this case, let's um, play around with that and get that working. We're going to use uh, a multiply and um, we can get to that one of two ways, right click or one of three ways, find it over here, or we can hit M and just left click and bring it up. So there's our multiply. So we're gonna multiply the texture coordinates instead of adjusting them uh, here in the tiling because we can't expose these to the instance. We can't have the adjustment on them. And we want them both the same anyway. So I'm gonna use a single constant and this constant uh, set to a value of one is gonna tile it up. Right click on it, convert to parameter, and now it gives you a parameter and these will be able to be exposed in the instance you'll see in a while. So let's just go, um, uh, we'll call this, um, uh, you know, canvas tiling and we'll stick it into a group just called, um, um, you know, tent settings. So that'll be exposed this way, uh, and you'll see that as we uh, as we get back to it. But uh, that's a necessary sort of way of doing that and getting that set up. So there's our um, uh, tiled tiled up uh, uh, texture. Now what we want to do is we want to start blending in some uh, noise, and so you can grab a noise 
um, function. And the noise function takes a little bit of setting up and we want to blend into this, uh, use this noise to blend um, two colors to get, uh, together. So we're going to have a constant vector 3. Just going to push this up out of the way. And we're going to pick out a, you know, a nice browny kind of color. Maybe something like this in there. And for now, and we'll make this one even darker. Maybe now this one a little darker too. Somewhere like that. And we're going to blend these two together with this noise. So uh, we're going to need a lerp. Or again, uh, if you want to get this quickly, I believe it's L. There we go. And uh, Alert brings it together. So we're going to pipe in our two, and we're going to alpha them together with this noise. Now, let's take a look what this noise looks like. I'm going to right-click on it and say Start Previewing. And there's the noise. That's what it comes up looking like. Um, we can uh, play around with some settings here. Um, and uh, so I've set 8 and 8 in these to come up with this sort of even noise. And uh, again, you can play with some levels if you want, um, kind of add more or less um, uh, textury stuff in them. And we're going to leave the outputs there. See if I can get this showing. Let's leave that for now. <clears throat> And what we're going to do with this is we're going to uh, set up an ability to be able to scale in the size of the dirt that we're looking for. So the position, it's very odd the way this works. You'd think you would be controlling the scale, but there's a position here. There's no input into that value. What we need to do is we need to tile UVs, essentially. So we're going to need texture coordinates again. So we're going to need a texture coordinate input, and we're just going to leave that at one to one. And we want a way of multiplying this again. So the same thing we did here with a constant. So let's have a constant um, and let's expose that as a parameter. And we're going to call this um, uh, dirt size. And we're going to put it into the same tent settings. And again, we're going to uh, multiply these together. And then we're going to have to pull these out and we're going to have to um, uh, build a point 0.3. Now when you roll your mouse over this position it says 2 to 3 dimensional vector. I found it simply didn't work. It immediately um, messed it up when I plugged in a 2 dimensional uh, vector. Uh, it just doesn't work. Alt click on it to disconnect it. Um, so really what we need to do is use what's called an append. So an append vector node will allow us to be able to take our point 0.2 in and then just add in a constant again. Now we're going to be able to use this constant you're going to find uh, which is going to be kind of cool um, to uh, adjust the noise some more and adjust its, uh, its um, sort of randomness. So what we have really now is an X and a Y value and a Z value because noise is three-dimensional. So we're going to pipe that into the position and we should be able to go into our values and start scaling this up now. So this is the default value and you can see that we're getting this noisy value here going on. Now back to our noise, let's play around with uh, levels. You know, we can play around with a scale and um, try and get uh, something that looks a little better. That's probably all right. That's probably looking pretty good for some dirt kind of textures. Um, and we're going to be able to play around with this dirt size to change up that size value now. So we can scale that up and set it however we want. Let's leave it at a 1 for now as a default. It's going to be our default value that's going to be exposed again because it's a parameter coming up as dirt size. We'll be able to adjust that. So that's adjusting these two together. So if you look at the output of this, start previewing, you'll notice that we have this dirty texture going. This sort of dirty, noisy, muddy stuff kind of happening. And again, we can go and play around with the 
uh, some settings to, to figure out how we want to mix those together a bit more. Now there's different types of noises. You can go with Veroni, which gives you nice cracks and whatnot, um, or others. Uh, but we're just going to stick with the basics uh, now, just the simple uh, uh, texture based. So we're going to uh, bring these together into another lerp. So we've lerped our two noises together. We want to lerp it uh, together with our um, texture sample. So let's just create another one and we're going to pipe these two together. And I want to make this one the one that's uh, previewing now. So you can see here's the top, um, you know, the amount that we've got, sort of the, it's all showing the top, um, or it looks like it is anyways. If we go to zero, we're going to get all the top. If we're going to go to one, we're going to get all of the dirt. So uh, 0.5, where it was, was sort of a, a dirty overall kind of uh, texture. We're going to take the output of our um, uh, height map, and we're going to use that as a way to be able to control it and to be able to uh, control those values. So I'm going to pipe that in, and that's going to have our, our, you know, it's got a little bit of dirt mixed in. But we want to be able to control this, and we want to be able to uh, affect how this is, um, uh, you, know, uh, you know, working with the... Um, working with the, the, the values. We want to be able to push and pull this to be able to uh, adjust how much dirt we have uh, for any given shader that we drop on things. So we're going to add a, a couple of things. We're going to need an add and we're going to need a multiply. And I just, again just held down A and M to get those. And so we're going to be um, uh, piping in the uh, add into our multiply. And right now we're going to take our texture out into A and again, we're going to add a constant, um, and we're going to add another constant. And this constant, again, it's going to be uh, converted to a parameter so that we've got access to it and able to uh, adjust it when we want. We're going to stick it in the same tent settings, and this is going to be called um, uh, dirt add. And we can call this one when we expose it. Kind of dirt um, dirt coverage. You'll kind of see why. I don't know if it's uh, the best name for it, but uh, it might work. And then we're going to pipe those into uh, the alpha so that we can control these. So if we take the um, uh, dirt coverage and we crank it up, you'll see that it starts creating dirt overall. If we use the um, additive scale, we can actually offset the amount of dirt that's kind of getting added into it. But what we're getting is that the kind of the opposite way around uh, that what we probably want. What we're going to do is we're going to invert our mask and flip it over to, to make sure that these two are blending together right. We have our dirt on the bottom um, and our, our canvas on top. And so you can actually flip over a map with something called one minus. And one minus will take uh, the input of a map and invert the value. So we're going to flip the value over and um, work with it that way. So with zero on our dirt, you'll see that we don't have any dirt uh, on our uh, coverage. Our ad right now is sitting at one as well. And so we can dial that up. And as we dial that up, <laughs> you can see more dirt being added in. So it's kind of overall, if we take our, our um, additive, it'll make it stronger in spots or we could actually pull it down into the negative. And it's kind of, uh, we're, we're controlling it with essentially a contrast that we're adding in here. So let's at, start these at both at zero as their default values again. And now we should have um, a fairly, you know, a robust um, a solution here. Uh, the last one we want to expose, sorry, convert parameter, is our Z value in our texture coordinates, our, our noise position. And this is because noise is three-dimensional. We can actually not just slide it over the surface with texture coordinates, but we can also push it up and down through the surface and get a different noise, basically a different sort of randomization of the noise by pushing it up and down through it. So 
we're going to call this um, uh, dirt random. That looks like we should have uh, a pretty good dirt texture there. Let's go take a look what we've got on our tent right now. And so when we go to our tent, we can see that we've got that. And we can't make any changes to our texture here. There's no way of actually adjusting it without going back to our original texture. So this is where we're going to go just back to the beginning. Take our uh, uh, material, right click and say create material instance. Now that material instance is going to, if I double click on it, you'll notice that we have these settings that we actually created and there are these extra uh, settings. Now it looks like we didn't put all of them and I kept typing S's, so let's just go correct that real fast. I'm just gonna pull that down to the side. So I'm gonna go and grab the ones I forgot to put in the right groups like this, tent settings, um, yeah, it was random and coverage needs to be in the settings and let's go and get the naming fix the naming conventions because I managed to type S's for some reason in them and canvas tiling dirt add there it is here we go just apply that and so you'll see that we've got our um, Ability to be able to turn these on now and utilize them so we can tile it up and down now if you notice with the tiling here's something else that really whole numbers are all that we can use a value of two will make sure it tiles without a seam a value of three will make sure it tiles without a seam but anything else in between doesn't work so we want to um, uh, make sure that that doesn't happen and we need to add one more node so that when we're uh, pushing this up and down, it actually doesn't, uh, it doesn't do that. It pops from one value to the next. So we can go back up here and take our, our value and add another one called round. So, you know, rounding in math. And let's pump the round in and pump it out. Now, what's not going to change here is the fact that we can have a point value. But because it's rounding, it's going to round to the nearest value as we uh, put this up and down, you can see it pop in size now as opposed to, um, you know, slowly change so that we're never going to see a seam now. Essentially, you only get whole numbers output from it. So with that being said, that looks pretty good. This all looks like it's, uh, um, you know, the setup correctly now. Let's go back to our um, tent. I'm not going to worry about a material in here, for instance. So I'm just going to go and say clear. And I'm going to go back and take the ones that are in um, in the viewport uh, working on them. So I'm going to select one and I want to take that instance. I want to drop that instance in the material. Now I'm going to create another instance to illustrate this. I'm going to select my other mesh and I'm going to put that material instance on this one. So with the first one chosen, I could actually add and decide how much dirt is going to be in there. and play around with how much dirt gets added. And you can see that it can be adjusted up and down now. To push in the amount of dirt you're looking for overall. So I can make a nice dirty texture with it with some more uh, dirt in the crevices uh, and whatnot. Now you can also see when we push it up high that the, the um, dirt uh, size isn't really very good. So let's make that much smaller so that it's a nice small dirty texture. Just has some random randomy noise kind of in it. Uh, and you'll also notice if I push it back to being larger where you can see it and do the, the dirt um, random value, what it's actually doing, you can see it's slowly changing its shape and form and it's actually pushing it in and out of the surface. Um, to to have it do that. That's also a very interesting way to make watery kind of surfaces, uh, reflections. If you think about reflections in a pool, uh, you can actually get that to uh, generate a reflection in a pool by pushing it uh, in and out and animating that value going up and down. So uh, uh, the caustics, um, as you would uh, think of it as. 
So there's our dirt size. We'll make that nice and small again. And then probably pull down Or we can go in the other direction. How about dirt add into negative? And we can push it just into the into the corners a bit. So there you go. We've got a nice dirty piece going on there. So with the other instance, so the second instance, we can do the same thing now, uh, but with the other um, tent. Oops. So same thing, we can go and adjust this now, turn on what we need to turn on, tile up our, our texture to the right uh, tile you know, size, add the uh, amount of dirt we want. I think a negative work pretty good, some coverage. Maybe we want to make this a little just dirtier overall. Um, of course, our um, randomness can be changed. And we, again, we also need to uh, change up the dirt size so that we've got a pretty good size. I think our size here was 14. It's probably closer to where we need to be. So there's uh, the ability to be able to use uh, material instances to save on uh, memory space and to be able to have varied textures to have it uh, a variation in color and amounts uh, on the models so they don't all look exactly the same yet they actually are.